As we enter into November and deeper into the holidays, much of the things thrown in our face during this season, like holiday advertisements and the change in workflow depending on your job, community expectations, all of these things bring about certain emotions that we really only feel around this specific time of the year. And I felt, what can I do to make this time of year, this time around, something different and more introspective? It's voting season. There's much to digest, much to feel divided about in our own communities. And in the midst of all of this, I'm supposed to be grateful. Grateful that it's not 1932 and I am able to use my voice. I'm supposed to feel grateful that I have this ability to make a choice. None of this will help the fact that I gotta find a way to get this money by tomorrow. Huh? I gotta think of a way to get... Huh? I gotta think of a way to get this money by tomorrow. So I take a day off that I can't afford to stand in a line and wait to press a button. All of this just reminds me that we're all divided and it doesn't necessarily make me feel satisfied with how things are run. I still feel powerless, but I'm forced to feel grateful because things weren't as they were. But there's still so much work consciously that needs to be done. So excuse me if I'm not in the mood to twerk my way to the polls like they obviously are trying to convince me to do. As you can tell, I've been at a bit of a wrestle with God lately. There were a lot of things happening in my spiritual journey that were causing me friction and confusion about gratitude and what I should be grateful for. Performative settling, contempt, the lack of justice in my experiences, the lack of motivation after years of unacknowledged hard work. I could go on about the basics of gratitude and how to show more gratitude to receive more abundance, but that isn't necessarily the case. It wasn't for Job. His gratitude and faith never changed his adversity. There's something more complex to touch. There's a deeper place that we can go, a more refined space of awareness that God exists in, and I would like to get there with you today. Welcome to the Ron Half Podcast, where we get real and then some. I'm your host, Jasmine Siri, and every week I will speak on topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind to reach our goals from a healed and open place together. So, let's get started. On the topic of gratitude, I started to develop more curiosities of the root of what we are all grateful for, more than how we choose to show gratitude. Anyone can look grateful for something. Anyone can pretend that they're grateful for what's happening or what they have in their life, even when they don't believe it, or exist on the surface. Are you grateful for the things that you have that feed your ego into believing that you are above someone else? Are you grateful for the things that keep you in comfort? For the luxuries that could divide you from relating and connecting with the stranger on the street? Are we grateful for the things we have? Because showing gratitude could possibly convince this higher power into giving us more things. It's like, I know we love God, but... Sometimes we insult his intelligence by the simplicities of our mind given to us by this world that we were not designed to be of. Because in the event that nothing more ever comes, when the list of resources start to disintegrate and God has no material or physical thing to bless, are you emotionally developed enough to have gratitude in the emptiness? This empty space where we get the feeling of being abandoned. I want to talk about that space. Because for many of us, it's easy to victimize ourselves there. When we enter the empty space after unfortunate circumstances and fall weary because of how it all looks and how long we have resided there, we curse ourselves, we lower our worth, we convince ourselves that rock bottom is a grave and we bury ourselves there before it's our time. What if I told you the only thing keeping you feeling this way isn't the series of events, it's your mind and how you were perceiving all of those moments? Because yes, the things fell apart. 
and the old things are no longer present in your life to complain about anymore. The relationships that never felt safe are in the past, but now we don't even have them to speak to and our family no longer knows us. And if you would have continued to do what you were doing before you pursued a relationship with God, maybe you could have afforded a long vacation by now. But if you really thought about it, and were honest enough about your position, where you were before this empty space was not a better place. I can even reach and say where you were before could have destroyed you. And I awakened in my ability to have gratitude. Better yet, I awakened in my ability to see all of the gratitude that I did not have when I realized that this empty space, this room that I was feeling that was the series of my life was really a space in God's heart for me. And it was big. And it was so big that it overwhelmed me. When you get a puppy or a kitten, they say it's good to keep it in a small area of your home at first because the baby animal may get sick from being overwhelmed by fear of all of the newness that is your apartment. So you may keep it in a bathroom or in your laundry area until it's time and until it has shown signs of growth. So for us, we enter this new and larger space because we have graduated and we should have gratitude for the development, period. And I say it once, I say it all the time, what is not growing dies. Can't you see that this is your time of promotion? I think for me, when this happened and I entered this new space, this emptiness, no matter how much of my past was full of longing for this newness that I had entered, I got to the new place and still didn't know how to act because it was new. You're not going to know how to act in a place that you have never been. And I think God knows that about us. So when we are taken to this place, we're given time to regulate. Then... When the crying party is over, when we stop playing the victim, it's time to do the work. You didn't think that you would ask for more without being required of more. So when we're gifted access in this new space, we feel alone because it is empty. It is empty because of the work that has to be done in this space. Understand. We would not have been given such a vast space in God's heart if the plan was not for us to fill it and have dominion over it. So when we are given the space or the insight or the platform or the land or the creative idea, we work in our own capacity and we have gratitude that something out there believes in what we carry enough to give us a space big enough to develop it all and the vision to see it first. This space won't fill itself. The tools in you won't work if you never see them to use them. It's in you, it's in all of us. When we fear the work, we exist outside of the gratitude. So beneath the surface of this broken record, we hear that if we have gratitude, the universe gives us more things to be grateful for. What they really mean without saying is when we have enough gratitude for the newness that has developed inside of us by our change in circumstances, change in heart posture, change in awareness, the following work that we produce in the earth will be more and productive because it was birthed from a more expanded version of ourselves. In a space that once felt empty, we have grown in capacity to take up space in. The work that we produce, that is a mirror and a direct representation of the work happening inside of us, will be in large quantity, capacity, and proportions, not because of us or who we are alone, but because it was given to us by someone that made the entire earth. And I don't know if you notice, but God is just really good at making very big things, and I don't think he can help it. 
In the beginning, he made the big things first. And from the big things, smaller things formed. So if you go back and look at a mushroom from like 400 million years ago, they were all as tall as trees. And the trees were as tall as mountains. And the animals were as tall as buildings. So when humans were designed, trying to make something so small in the likeness of something as large as our father. I'm pretty sure that was a big task, but it was done. But it still wasn't in harmony until it designed itself in two. And then it gave us its own breath so that although we are bound to these bodies, inside of us is something greater in capacity. I think that is the energy behind why we try to push our own limits. That is the spirit of why we create. I think that's why the Olympics exist. Honestly, we just have love to find ways to track our divinity. And I think humans are just so fascinating. When you have divinity, you don't need much because it's already in our minds. To have it all, we just have to create it. Have you ever seen like a black box theater play? It's where the stage isn't in an auditorium with sets and a lot of changes in scene. All you have is a black box for a stage and some lights, maybe. And instead of seeing the story from above or below, depending on where you are in an auditorium, in a black box production, you're seated on the same level of the stage. So you see it from different angles depending on where you are. It seems like not much can come from it but I'm telling you like it goes down and I feel like a black box is where I have seen some of the most imaginative vulnerable and just intimate storytelling that I've ever seen in my life because in reality all you need is the ability to tell an honest story and imagination all you need is the ability to do the work from a performative standpoint, you may not know because it just probably is not in one of your interests, but probably your favorite actors are so good and love for the ways that they tell stories that people see in box offices today because of the ways they tell stories inside of a black box. And I bring this up because in that empty place that we feel that we have been abandoned, that we are alone, that we are not of any value, that we have no tools or nothing to be grateful for, I want you to think of your life as a black box and God as the theater director sitting in their spot, typically in the middle or the center or directly in front. You know how they are. Waiting for you to be set on fire for him and not to act like or play your role but to tell an honest story with the life that's been given to you. A perfect story is boring. It's boring even for the person that created us. That's why they made us so imperfect. But an honest story, a raw expression, I think that's where even God sees himself the most. So when we move forward and we do the things and we set ourselves on fire to light others, we do it with gratitude, not because of the outcome, but because the honesty of our lives, telling the story of our lives, it's like a God's blessing back to himself. So outside of the physical things that we possess and the accolades that look good on a resume, I want you to know that you are enough to be grateful for exactly where you are. So what is divine in you that you have gratitude for right now? What has been given to you on your path that you know is a gift especially made for you? And if you don't know, it's really okay. No one knows at some point in their lives until they do. That's just the reality of it. I wish I could tell you there was a book or a seminar that I went to that allowed me to know what it was that I was supposed to be doing or what was my gift that I should be sharing. Honestly, it was a gust of wind and I dropped everything that I was doing and I just started yapping my mouth and now I can't shut the up. 
Anyway, for the people that do know, how are you walking in it? Maybe the ways that you walk could help someone walk in their own path. Share it in the comments below. I would love to see it and I'm sure someone else would be blessed by seeing it as well. I think that is all that I have for today. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thank you for watching and making it to this far into the episode. I love you all so much. Thank you for being a part of my dreams coming true. And I will see you all in the next one.